So um, if it's okay with everyone, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully a couple more people will join us, which would be great. But we, of course, send our video out to folks after the event. Uh, and there was some delays, a delay in the crafts getting out this time. So um, and shipping uh, sometimes can take longer than expected. So unfortunately, uh, folks may not have gotten their kits. So they'll end up watching it um, after they get their kits in the video. So but I am so grateful that everybody uh, is here with us today. Welcome, welcome to this uh, wonderful event uh, where we're going to be talking about housing insecurity, um, more commonly known as homelessness. And so uh, welcome. Um, thanks for coming to this event. This is part of our craftivism series. And this is where adults learn art techniques so that they can do lots of different projects after they, they are done with the event. Um, and so my name is Stacy. And uh, since our co-facilitator today, we have Sunny and we have Stacy as co-facilitators. I'm Stacy K. And our crafting co-facilitator is um, Stacy L. So it might be a little confusing, but we will make do. Uh, my pronouns are she and her, and I am wearing a flowered shirt. Uh, and uh, my background is uh, a sign, a banner of uh, Inform Your Community. And I have a picture of some flower um, artwork. Uh, I'm a white woman with gray salt and pepper hair. So uh, thank you all for coming. Closed captioning is enabled. So if you do uh, want to use that, feel free, please do. And Inform Your Community, we offer free events. Uh, we send the craft materials for free. There's no charge for attending the events. Uh, and the shipping is free as well. You can find out more about our, our events at uh, informyourcommunity.org. Um, and you can find our social media links on the bottom. Feel free to donate. We ne never get upset when folks donate to help us cover those costs for free shipping. And um, also, we uh, always appreciate you know sharing, uh, sharing what we do with others, as well as if you uh, sign up for our mailing list. Uh, if you're not already on it. So we're really grateful to have you here today. If you're watching the recording of this event, please do uh, like our video and subscribe to our channel. So homelessness is an un important topic uh, really for us to discuss now even more than ever. There are 580,000 people who are homeless in the United States, in New York City, where our headquarters is, uh, and where there's something called a right to shelter law, which uh, has, had been in place for four years until recently, uh, there were some changes to it. Um, there are 21,000 homeless children alone. So this is clearly a very big issue, one that certainly hits close to home here in New York, and certainly an issue we see on the news and in other states as well, uh, being greatly affected. Uh, as I mentioned, this is part of our craftivism series. Uh, we're glad to have you here. We're also glad to have Sunny Moon here with us today. So uh, Sunny Moon is a volunteer uh, at Open Heart and other uh, organizations that support the unhoused. So we're so grateful to have you here today, Sunny. Thank you for coming. Hi, everybody. So my pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm wearing a red dress and I'm wearing glasses and I'm I'm Korean American. Um, uh, but I, uh, not but, but, but I have blonde just curly hair, uh, but I'm Korean American and I'm very excited to be here with you guys. Thank you so much, Sunny. We're excited to have you here. Uh, and we're also grateful to Tyler, who's going to be helping us out with tech. And additionally, um, throughout the craft, um, if you have any questions, any tech issues or anything we can help you with, please feel free to unmute yourself, talk, or just, you know, let us know or write in the chat. Um, and Tyler, is that a hand up or is that saying hi? Oh, Tyler's saying hi right there now. Um, so yeah, so feel free to write in the chat and let us know. Uh, and of course, we'd love to see your progress on this uh, project as you go along the event today. Um, and our crafter today is going to be Stacy, but this is Stacy L. Um, <laughs> and Stacy, I would love if you would tell us some more about the craft technique we're going to be learning about today. Absolutely. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us today. My pronouns are she and her. I am a white woman with curly brown hair. Um, I'm wearing a blue shirt and my background is gray. Um, so our goal today is to teach you a finger knitting technique um, using your hands um, and uh, to, to get you started. And you will be making a scarf like this one here. Um, don't be alarmed. Mine is short because I actually made this for my granddaughter <laughs> and she loves it, but I had to borrow it from her to show all of you. <laughs> um, 
So in the beginning, I'm going to help you get over the awkwardness of the movements as we're going through the technique. Um, it's going to be repeated, repeated, and repeated um, just to get you through the awkwardness. So don't be alarmed if it feels awkward. It's going to feel awkward, <laughs> but we will get you through this. And um, it's a, a muscle memory motion, repeated movements. Um, once you get your desired yarn, you'll feel more comfortable with the motion. Absolutely, you will. Um, don't feel like you have to memorize this. You will, um, you're going to get this video to watch a few days after the event and you can go back and watch and repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, I chose this craft because of the symbolism of a scarf. Practically speaking, when we think of a scarf, um, we think of it as keeping us warm and um, protecting us from the cold and um, scarves feel cozy. And uh, when you think of wearing a scarf, you think of like a warm cup of hot cocoa um, or something hot, like maybe picturing yourself by a fireplace. Um, so with that, when we think of a home, it also has two meanings for us, a place we get shelter and a place for emotional support. Um, so calling someone homeless is a bit of a misnomer. Um, unhoused or houseless is a more accurate term because when it comes to homelessness, it's the shelter that's really the issue. Um, unhoused people can sometimes carry their items around with them, their personal belongings, and you may have seen this. Um, you know, someone with a shopping cart full of their personal belongings, they take along with them because they have a lack of housing. Um, so, um, Sunny, do you have anything to oh, um, sure. add to that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm sort of like okay. blanking. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the words that we use uh, to build on what Stacey L had just spoke about, but uh, remember uh, that uh, the word homeless implies a lack of permanent housing, uh, but sometimes we use other words like unsheltered uh, because it's broader and refers to a lack of physical shelter, even if it's temporary and not necessarily permanent. Um, just as Stacy mentioned earlier, we also use the terms unhoused or houseless um, as well. Um, if somebody can be shelterless, but if they're in something like a um, a, 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 a congregate shelter, they're not considered unsheltered, but, but anyways, um, we don't think of homelessness as a temporary state, or a lot of times people don't think of it as a temporary state, but it can be, and it often is. And sometimes what happens is that somebody can be down on their luck for a short period of time, um, because of, for example, the current housing shortage, um, or, you know, you lost your job. So for example, Google recently had, and lots of tech companies, for example, had layoffs of, you know, thousands of people. And in fact, Google specifically laid off 12,000 people. And you, what, I think a lot of people are surprised by is that some people who are in, um, uh, un, you know, shelters uh, for people who don't have their own homes or or, or unhoused, forty percent of them actually have a job, but their job just doesn't provide enough for, so that they can actually get housing when housing is very expensive. Wow, that's a great point, um, Sunny, about homelessness being a temporary state rather than um, always assuming a longer term of a permanent situation, I haven't really thought of it in that way uh, before. Um, so it's definitely something to keep in mind. And um, so what do you say we get started on this craft? Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> great. Um, so um, some, of, uh, some of you may have received your craft kits in the mail if you've registered at least a week in advance of the event, as Stacy mentioned um, in the intro. Um, if you're coming on late, um, you may have not received the craft kit um, and that's okay. I'm going to go through what you can use um, in place of it. There was um, a little delay in uh, the mail this time around, but again, remember you can always go back and when you do get your craft kit and look back at the recording and actually use the yarn um, that you're going to get in the mail. Um, so if you do have the kit, um, so, I'm going to say that this time the craft kit looks very, very simple. If um, you've joined Inform Your Community events in the past, you know that sometimes they're a lot more intricate and a lot, a lot of 
um, things inside the bag. Don't be fooled though, because this, even though it looks like nothing, will transform into something like this. <laughs> and you will be amazed at how awesome you'll do. Um, so if you have a long piece of yarn and uh, inside of the kit, and you also receive some information about uh, inform your community and the infographic as well um, about the topic today. So definitely take some time and look over that and the business card as well. And always remember there's a nice little joke on the back to spread some laughter. Um, so inside the kit, you, uh, um, so we didn't send an entire skein. Um, a skein of yarn is um, actually a whole unit like this where you can go to the store and pick out your colors. So there's so many different choices, as you can see. So when you do go to the store, um, you can pick out whatever it is you'd like to, uh, to make. And that's the fun part of crafting with yarn is you get to pick out colors and thickness and, and all the choices that you have. And like I said, I took my granddaughter to the store and she picked out purple because it's her favorite color. And um, we made this for her. Um, so again, you're going to learn the technique and then when you buy your own beautiful yarn to make, um, you'll, you'll make your own scarf. So if you don't have our kit, what you can do, it's pretty easy to look for some items from your home. You can actually even use a shoelace. Um, if you have some, um, embroidery floss, you can actually use that as well. Um, some other substitutes would be a thin ribbon. Um, embroidery floss is very good in a pinch. You can even use thread, although I don't necessarily uh, recommend that one because of pulling it tight on your fingers. Um, so if you, you're actually going to need something, if you can think of something like 16 feet long um, is the size that you're going to want to start with. Um, so while uh, take a few minutes and find your items and take out your yarn from uh, your package if you have it and definitely pull out all the um, like make it nice and loose for yourself and anything that you've found in your home to get any knots out. Um, so while folks are doing that, um, Sunny, can you tell us some of the important values that are often associated with people who are homeless? I'm um, sure. Um, kindness and charitable giving or just giving or sharing are very important because they depend on um, these um, uh, these things, um, but they also depend on each other. And so you may actually see a lot of people who are on house sharing resources with each other. And because they don't have a lot of resources themselves, um, they're very resilient. And you can imagine that um, for everything that they're going through, this is fundamental to their survival. But again, kindness, and, and sharing what we have, if we're lucky enough to have more, is really what's fundamental. Yes, I actually, for example, um, to go along with that, there is a fast food uh, restaurant by me and there's a few homeless um, people that are there and they spend some time out in front and they're often talking to each other. Um, and I overhear them sometimes talking about their you know, what they have or what they can share uh, with each other. And, you know, they have that camaraderie with each other. Um, so that's actually very good considering that um, the likelihood that a person who is homeless is 10 times more uh, likely to be a victim, uh, a crime victim compared to a non uh, houseless or homeless person. Uh, so they definitely do need to be resilient. Exactly, and visible. People who are homeless are very visible, but also they're invisible because people walk right by them as if they're not there. Um, sadly, that's what makes it difficult for people who are, are unhoused to maintain dignity, which is also very um, which is also a very important value to them. People who are unhoused should be treated as people um, like anybody else with respect, and we and we should treat them as they would want to be treated, as we would want to be treated in that same situation. Um, uh, just a comment, I recently attended 
uh, meeting with um, unhoused individuals to hear from their perspective about what it's like to do basic things that we take for granted, like riding the subway. And they said that sometimes when they ask people for money, um, the way that people just pretend like they don't exist is one of the hardest things about their circumstances. And sometimes if I, even if I don't have, if I, if I don't have any cash or food on me, I'll make sure that I look at the person who asked and say, I'm sorry, I don't have anything today. And I look at them in the eye and at least speak to them as if they actually exist instead of just ignoring them and, you know, looking at every other place so that I don't have to look at this person. Yeah. I, um, that, that's so well said and so touching. Um, I actually witnessed myself once a, um, uh, that that's a, a definitely a great point. And I was in entering a food store and I had just walked in to a local food store by me. And there are some um, individuals there also that are always outside. Um, they are uh, oftentimes I see that they're not looked at by um, by anyone. So one had entered the store and a woman uh, shortly came in behind him and um they seemed to have known each other and she said oh you're here you're here again today and she took him arm in arm and she she took him shopping it seemed to be kind of like a, a normal thing maybe or that she has done this before and it was just so touching that i felt so moved by it because i didn't think some people might look and say wow why is she doing that or like amazed by her but what i felt most touched by is how he felt you know and that he he felt loved you know <laughs> and he was um you know getting loved by you know maybe a stranger but was once a stranger and now they know each other so I, I was just so moved in how visible basically I'll use that word how visible he felt um is what really touched me at that moment so I thought it was great <laughs> um so with that um I think everyone probably has their yarn now so um let's start knitting um so before we get started, I uh, so normally when you think of knitting, I know we're you know I'm showing you the technique of finger knitting, and um, most of the times you think of knitting as knitting with needles. Um, you aren't going to need needles for this um, if you'd like to at some point as you progress in your technique um, use needles. Um, I'm going to ask Stacy if you can show what needles look like. <laughs> Um, just so that, you know, because they're different, there's crochet needles and there's knitting needles, um, which I believe come in pairs. Uh, <laughs> yes. So we have um, here, this is like a set of needles and they come in all kinds of sizes. So these are bamboo needles and these are kind of thick. And these are another set of bamboo needles, but these are kind of thin. And you'll see usually on the ends, on the tips of them, or sometimes on the side of them, um, they'll actually they'll say the size so you'll know what size and then on the skein itself I don't know if you're going to say this but and you can yeah, look you up can. about it but on yeah. the skein itself it will actually tell you about what size needle they recommend you to use for that um, particular project um, so we're not going to go into it too much I'm sure but you know oh yeah so there there you go so it'll yeah. tell you what needles to use and they come in all types of things so I have a a plastic one here, there's metal ones, um, bamboo ones, other types of wood. Um, and it really depends on kind of your own preference. Um, I, I I hate the sound of metal needles because they clank, mm -hmm. but I actually think they work better than wooden wooden um wooden ones. So I end up using the 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 metal ones myself. So but it's really just a matter of preference. But there's lots okay. of different types and sizes. Um, thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> As you can see, I, I don't I don't knit with the uh, needles, so I haven't gone out and I haven't you know progressed to needing to use them. You can actually um, in a pinch if you need to use a um, um, a chopstick actually as well if you have those um, in your home. So as Stacy had said, different schemes will show the information needed uh, related to the size um, needle. Ex um, et cetera. But we're not demonstrating that today, but we did just want to mention to you, you know, in, in the future, if you want to go into that, um, you can find all the information you need about that online. Um, you can look up um, how to do that. So uh, today we're going to be finger knitting, so we don't need needles. Don't worry about looking for that right now. Um, 
it's useful if you want to have a chopstick or something long and thin handy, if you do plan to do a full scarf. Um, because then if you at any point need to stop and remove um, what you've done so far, because you don't want to get like this far along and then you're like, great, I have to go to the bathroom <laughs> or something, um, you can actually remove it from your hand um, and put it on the needle if you have one. Um, okay, so on to finger knitting. So two caveats before we start. Um, as we're finger knitting, it is going to be hard for you to pull it tight enough um, because it, and it's hard for you to pull it um, over your fingertips. As we go through it, you'll see, um, just remember like the closer your fingers are together, um, the more controlled the movement is, the easier it is for you to get the motion. So if you can keep your fingers um, together, uh, that will be great. And, um, and you're going to have, oh, sorry. Uh, let me show you this too. <laughs> when you're when you're looping it around your finger, um, if you can see that. So when you loop, do a tight loop as opposed to like a looser loop. You don't want it to like droop. You don't want it to have a droopy loop. <laughs> um, so pull um, tighter, and you're gonna like hold. Um, so we're also the other. The second caveat is we are practicing with thin yarn as you can see, so this one's thinner. Um, you know, you'll see all sorts of different sizes and shapes when you go and purchase your own yarn, um, but it's easier for you to get the motion uh, with the thinner yarn for practice. It's, it's definitely gonna seem uh, complicated at first, but it's the same set of movements going back, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it actually, the repetitive movements um, they become so mesmerizing and calming. Like at, as you're sitting there knitting, you'll you'll find that it's one of those things like you're not gonna be able to put down. <laughs> um, so because the yarn is thin and our fingers are wide, you're going to see big holes. So I'm gonna show you like in a sample that I was using. So the holes are big and you may not be used to seeing something knitted with these big holes. Um, but it's okay at first, it's because because it's practice. So we want you again to just get the technique. Um, okay, so as I mentioned before, you want to take out your yarn and pull out any of the knots. You want it nice and loose flowing. And so some things, okay. So you're going to take one end of the yarn and hold the short end of it in your thumb, just a couple of inches like this. And I'll show you also, if I'll show you the, the front. So that's gonna be where you're going to place basically a couple of inches of the yarn between your thumb and a little low on your, uh, actually a little low on your thumb, if you can see that. And you're gonna, Pull on the long end of all your string and you're going to wrap it around the back of your pointer finger so that the back of your hand looks like this. And when you're looking at the palm of your hand, it looks like that. So again, you're going to take that much in your thumb, wrap it around the back of your hand, wrap it around your pointer. And then we're just wrapping it around our middle finger, wrapping it around our ring finger and wrapping it around our pinky. Show you again. So wrap around. So you can even do that movement of like, look at the palm of your hand and then turn it away from you. <laughs> wrap it around that way and then Hold it like that and then just kind of separate your fingers, wrap it around your middle, wrap it around your ring finger and wrap it around your pinky. So if you can get that movement, you're good. <laughs> you're golden. It, that's the first set of movements. That's to start and it's basically wrapping. Um, 
forward and backwards around your pinky. So again, I can show you long ways. So we're looking like that. And we're going to wrap it around our middle, wrap it around our ring finger, and wrap it around our pinky. So you should have one row. We'll call it a row, one row around um, your fingers. Any questions? All good. <laughs> um, so yes, like I said, if you can get that technique, that you're golden. So we're gonna we're gonna end there. And you see how I'm pulling on this tight, and you always want to keep this in your thumb, nice, you know, always tucked in there. Just think of that as like just being tucked right into your thumb. Um, and you can see that I'm kind of keeping it like at knuckles length, um, even a little higher if you can, as you perfect your technique, um, you know, you'll, you'll see why. And when we get um, further into our steps, you're going to see why you don't want it low on your fingers. So keep it kind of at knuckles or just a little bit higher than your knuckles, um, if you can. And I'll start again, wrapping, 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 wrapping. And if there's no questions, we're gonna go on to step two, which is the second row. And again, if you start to loosen or you feel your thumb start to like let this loose, just pull it a little tight and you can always pull this tight. Okay, so now you can think of this as a reverse wrap. Um, and you're always, going to have either one or two rows, no more than two rows on your fingers at all times. So if you start to wrap too much, if you ever have a third row, you know you're doing something a little wrong. So stop and unwrap and see what, what it is you're doing. <laughs> okay, so we should be here now. That's the back of your hand. That's the palm of your hand. So now take your long end and wrap your pinky once, so you're going through, can you see that? Okay, so <laughs> we're wrapping around the pinky. And then you wanna go just like we went behind our fingers, um, with, starting with the pointer, you're gonna go behind your ring finger and wrap around and wrap around and wrap around. So that you have that and push them kind of down close together if you can get them um you know always always keep your rows near each other as best you can and again later on in this step you'll see why all right so i'm going to unwrap and do that again so we're starting from the beginning first row wrap around pointer Wrap around middle, wrap around ring finger, wrap around pinky. So we have our first row. We're gonna go around the pinky and behind the ring finger. And then behind the middle finger and behind the ring finger. Everybody got that? <laughs> okay. If there are no questions, um, so I'm just we're you know we're going to keep repeating the steps and going through it. You're going to play with that technique um, as we go through. So definitely, you know, now you can see the caveat of keeping your fingers close together because this is going to be your width of the the spacing. Um, so tightness is definitely keep it as tight as you can because you'll have less. Um, less holes. Um, pull the tight, you know, pull the yarn tight from both sides as you can, um, you know, as you're gently going through. Um, keep your thumb on the short, you know, definitely here on the short tail. Um, and so you can see then using thicker yarn, you're going to have less holes um, as you're going, as you're going through. Um, so while we work on this, and I'm gonna continue to demonstrate, 
um, as we go through. Um, Sunny, I'm gonna uh, go back to you. Can you tell us some well-known um, names that we might associate with homelessness? I'm sure. Um, the first thing that comes to my mind is Jimmy Carter, who has actually been in the news lately with the very sad passing of his wife of 77 years. Um, I think everybody's familiar with uh, Jimmy Carter that after his presidency, um, he did lots of great work, including partnering with Habitat for Humanity, uh, which builds affordable homes for first time homeowners. And through and he's been doing this through the non for profit for 30 years. And even before things like um, Habitat for Humanity, in 1965, President Johnson actually created the Department of Urban Development, um, also known as HUD, to provide um, public housing, which is still in place today. Um, you may hear about people talking about like Section 8 housing and vouchers so that people who don't have the resources can still get um, uh, shelter. Um, I think also when we think about celebrities, um, we also uh, want to make sure that we uh, talk about people who shine a light on the plight of people who are unhoused. And the actor Robin Williams comes up because he was somebody who was known to in real life to be very considerate and treated people who no matter what their housing situation was with dignity. And he insisted on having people who are unhoused working um, on some of his movies. And I, one of my favorite movies of all time is The Kingfisher, which he, in which he played somebody who was um, unhoused, um, just a moving um, portrayal. And, you know, knowing this about him, it makes sense that he did such a great job in portraying somebody who was unhoused so, so beautifully. Wow. That's so great of him. I, I don't, um, thank you for sharing that. I didn't know that about uh, Robin Williams. Um, and it, it shouldn't be a surprise um, to us, like with any of us, when given a chance, um, homeless people can make, you know, great contributions. Um, so even um, Ella Fitzgerald comes to mind when I think of homelessness after being abused as a teenager, she became um, homeless, and then she also went on to be one of the most celebrated jazz singers of, of all time. There is another actor too, uh, Chris Gardner. Uh, he was homeless and eventually became um, a well-known businessman and worked on the stock market. Um, and there was a movie about his experience as well. I'm not. Um, I also. Yeah, That's so the, name of the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, most stories about people who are unhoused don't really turn out as well as we would like. Um, oops, uh, my computer just crashed. Uh, my other screen, so bear with me. <laughs> um, okay. a, a lot of times, because of their circumstances and what they're facing, um, you know, it's rare for people to do as well as they do. But that doesn't mean we should ever, you know, not we shouldn't give up. Um, but. Uh, far too often people who are in this situation end up with um, very bad um, outcomes or things tragically happening to them. Ali Forney is a, a name that some of you may have heard. Um, uh, they were a gender non-conforming child and they were unhoused from the age of 13. And then they were found shot to death at just the age of 22. And in their short life, they were a vocal advocate for the LGBTQ um, unhoused population. And to further their mission, the Alley Forney Center was founded in 2002. Um, it's actually a facility that um, is at, um, specializes or takes care of people from the LGBTQ community who are also young. I've actually worked with a couple of people who've gone there and they've had um, better experiences there than at other shelters. I also just want to point out one other thing. There's also a huge, um, this, uh, uh, it's uh, being unhoused, like lots of things that are bad in this country disproportionately impacts black people and people of color, but in particular black people. And there's a lot of racism associated with that. So I just want to point that out because it's something important that we have to make sure that we recognize that this isn't, you know, something that impacts all groups equally. Mm -hmm. That, that's definitely a sobering and uh, very important point. Um, and actually that's the reason why we're having this um, event and uh, to make sure we raise more awareness about um, homelessness. Um, so thank you so much. Um, okay, so we're going to go on to step three. Does anybody have any questions um, about steps one and two? 
Okay, so we are all doing great. <laughs> so you should um, at this point have um, two rows on your fingers, uh, two rows of yarn um, that look like this and keep them, uh, like I said, this, this is the point where you realize um, why we don't want the yarn below our knuckles. <laughs> so um, I'll show it one more time. We're gonna start here, We're gonna go around and around and around and around and then pinky and we're gonna reverse. So we have to go backwards and we should end here. So what you're going to do now is attach the loops. This is where we're going to take, you should always have a loop below and a loop above. Um, so when you're looking at the palm of your hand, you're gonna start with um, the yarn that's furthest away from the longer piece. So you're going to take the bottom loop here and you're going to pull it. I'm gonna try and loosen it. So that's why you don't want it too, too tight. Um, and you, if you can see that I'm taking the bottom piece of yarn and bringing it over the tip of my finger. And then we do that, we repeat it on all the fingers. So the second piece of yarn goes over the finger. I would imagine if you have long nails, they might get in um, the way a little bit. <laughs> um, and so we take the second one and bring it over. And this is where things start to get loose. So you wanna pull here and pull here a little bit. And now you're left with one row again. And back here, I know it looks like nothing, but you'll start to have rows eventually what you'll see happening is this will start to grow down the back of your hand um and that's the amazing part <laughs> um so I'll, I'll show that again so that you can see we're gonna so we're here with two rows on our fingers sorry Oop. okay And Stacy, I'm just gonna mention that we have about 18 minutes left in the in the okay. Um, so just to, to let you. You know, keep us on time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're gonna pull these rows over and tug and tighten. Okay. So. Um, Give me all right, thanks. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, there's actually, um, so yes, that so that's gonna uh, grow down the back of your hand, and we no, are going you. to keep we can uh, keep re wrapping and wrapping, and um, and continue on doing that. So, uh not to, uh, I just want to give you a joke, actually, <laughs> just to break up some of this. Um, actually, Stacey's, hey, his son came up with this. Um, what do you call an, an evil knitter's um, plan? Anybody? <laughs> okay, so an evil knitter's plan is an evil scheme, just like an evil scheme, <laughs> just to share that with you. <laughs> um, my, my son will be happy you mentioned you mentioned that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Stacy, not to change the topic, but what do you think are the top three causes of homelessness? Um, I actually uh, do know, and uh, <laughs> it's not a joke. So let's see: uh, lack of affordable housing, um, unemployment, and also mental illness. I bet a lot of people assume mental illness is the leading cause just because it's so visible to us. Yes. And did you know that in a study in Florida, um, 
it was found that the cost of incarcerating a person who is homeless for one year is $31,000. And as it turns out, paying that same person a minimum wage of $15 an hour works out to be the same thing, $31,000. So, Well, it's, uh, you know, paying a, a working wage and not um, criminalizing pro- poverty seems like it's a better use of our tax dollars as well, because when people get out of prison, we make it very hard for them to find housing and jobs because now they have a record. <laughs> yes, yes, um, definitely. <laughs> um, and I actually have a question for you, Sunny. Can you name an animated Disney movie from the 50s that had a homeless um, a homeless character as the main character? Um, I think I can. Are you talking about Lady and the Tramp? Yes. So- <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and although the main character um, was the Tramp, an obsolete name for someone who is homeless, even um, to make it into the movie itself, the representation of homeless life is not very accurate in real life. Um, but instead a positive uh, representation indeed to be very child-friendly, um, entertaining and endearing. Um, so, okay, so we're gonna move on to what would be the bulk of your work as a knitter. So you basically should now be back to step one. As you can see, we just kind of keep knitting back and forth around and around and around and bringing over over your fingers over your um over the top pulling tightening and you can see how it's growing down the back um so you're going to continue until you have about a hand's length of yarn um left to make a scarf so a scarf for an adult or for yourself would minimally take about three skeins. Um, do finger knit a scarf. And um, this one actually, because it was for a child, I didn't even use half of one, um, to be honest. So you can, you're gonna keep knitting almost to the end of the skein. When you do get to the end, if you need to add, because you're, you're going to need, you know, depending on the length of what you want to make, you're obviously going to need another skein. So you would take your end and just simply take another, your, your next piece of yarn. And this is where you can mix colors. Honestly, if you don't want to use one continuous color, um, you can bring in another skein of yarn with other colors. And you're literally just going to... Um, and you can see keeping this on your fingers the whole time, you're literally just going to tie a knot into the other end to carry it into your scarf. And what you're going to do then is just tuck and hide. It's so easy to just kind of work in ends um, and you can cut off any that are sticking out, uh, work them into your design as you're going through. Um, so obviously you don't wanna do that now because you're probably not anywhere near the end, but uh, you know, or um, as you're going through later on. Um, so as you can see, you know, we're talking and we're going through this, but you know, you can sit there watching a movie or, um, and knitting is very mesmerizing and you can, you know, literally just sit there and have a conversation. I have brought this into the waiting room of a doctor appointment. Um, so, and you know, it's just so easy. And at that point, if you are going to do that, you can bring um, something to be able to take it off of your, uh, off of your fingers for sure. <laughs> um, so, you know, just be careful as you're going through, you do wanna pay attention if you happen to miss a stitch, um, you know, depending on where you're at, it may be easier for you to just start over. So since I'm at the very beginning, if I were to miss a stitch, I'd probably just start over. Um, but if you can unravel and go back, you know, this way, you're, if you're very far into your project, um, you know, but you can also tuck like knitting is very forgiving. You can hide um, 
a large gap, you know, if if need be. So I'm just going to continue to knit a couple more rows. And um, so Sunny, as our knitters are finishing their projects, um, do you have any advice for um, our viewers on how they can help? Um, sure. So um, I wanted to make sure to mention that there is a way to help um, the homeless. And it, it is a crisis right now. And for those of us who are in big cities, we know that there's the additional um, people who are asylum seekers as well. That's um, straining the shelter system, um, particularly in New York City. Um, but the first thing I wanted to tell you about was that in 2022, President Biden released the federal strategic plan called All In, which has four goals related to preventing and ending homelessness. Um, there's also a particular strategy that you may want to know called permanent supportive housing. Um, what's that? Um, it's an alternative solution to end homelessness that focuses on accessible permanent housing that's coordinated with services such as financial assistance and mental health treatment, because we want this to be um, something that's sustainable, meaning not a rotating door of, you know, temporary housing, then being unhoused again. So, you know, wrap, we call this also wraparound services. Um. Understood, well coordinated, and and permanent sounds great. Um, there's got to be a much better option for um, unhoused people to rely um, on something else other than living in on city streets or in tents that are built. Um, like you may have seen some of the tent cities um, in certain locations, um, yeah, that are distributed by not for profits, um, and you know, or benches in uh, public streets or um, town squares. And, you know, some of those benches are not even an option anymore. They're not? What What do you mean? Um, it's uh, There's something called hostile architecture, and it's also called defensive design. It refers to features that are specifically and intentionally implemented um, into city and town planning so that uh, it's to deter people who are unhoused from sleeping in a location. Um, so you may have seen individuals that have individual seats in them for arm with armrests or short dividers so that people don't lay down. Um, these are uh, these are included, so, like I said, so people don't uh, lay down. And the other thing you may notice is that in front of some buildings, uh, if they have a ledge, they'll have these spikes so you can't sit down. I noticed this because I recently started having hip problems and so I have to sit down a lot when I'm walking. And a lot of times there's a space, but then they put something there so that you can't sit down, like spikes, literally. Wow, ouch, that's so uncomfortable. It yes. sounds uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, um, I, I did not, uh, thank you so much for explaining that hostile architecture. I haven't really noticed it myself, but I'm definitely going to. Um, look, you know, be on the lookout and, uh, and look into that. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so as you can see, we're growing nicely about a hand's length down the back of our hand. Did it, someone have a question? Okay, um, so we are going to Close. I'm going to show you how to close the scarf. Um, even though you know we're, you may not be there yet. That's totally fine. Um, it's just I want you to know how to close it off. So and you can go back and keep again watching. Um, so this is something that I can only do one time. <laughs> yeah. um, so you'll see that we ended. Basically, you you need to be where you can end where there's one row on your fingers. And you're going to, so it's gonna look like that when you're looking at the palm of your hand. So to finish off, you're going to pull the loop off of your pinky. I, I think it's best maybe to see it here. And I'll show you also, I, I can show you in the close up. So we're basically gonna take this loop and bring it here and this loop here and this loop here. So you'll see, you'll end up having um, no loops on uh, some of your fingers.
So we're gonna take it off of the pinky and bring it onto the ring finger. And then you're going to pull that second row. If you can see that, we're gonna pull that over our ring finger. Okay, so now you're going to take the ring finger row and pull it over your middle finger and tighten a little bit. So now you have two rows and you're gonna take that second row and put it over your pointer. Oop, did I do that wrong? Sorry, bottom row. <laughs> um, oh goodness, wait, I messed up. Um, oh, so I didn't go over. Yeah, I had to go over and then take this <laughs> and put that. So see how forgiving it is? I can just hide that little mess up. <laughs> and we're I love going to giving craft. Yes. And then you should be left with your craft hanging from your pointer finger, <laughs> um, just like that. So you basically just taking one row up here, over here. So you always have something to move that second row over um, to the other finger. And um, okay, so we pulled everything over and what you want to do, and I have a, um, a lot here, but what you're going to end up doing is to close this off, you're going to make a knot, basically. Um, you're gonna take your remaining string and pull it through. I'm just, I, I'm going to, I have a scissor here, so I'm just gonna cut mine to make it easier for you. Um, so say this is what I have left. I'm going to pull it through my loop and pull it not too tight because what you wanna do is then kind of just take your loop and, and pull it through again. And essentially you're just making a knot and pulling what's remaining and you're pulling it through. So you're gonna have a, a knot in your, yay, Stacy's got hers. <laughs> yes. Um, so, you have um, also maybe a hidden craft, a, a hidden project in this as well, because so maybe you just wanna keep practicing and make it as a nice bracelet for yourself. <laughs> it doesn't look too bad as a bracelet, or if you wanna make a comfy choker, um, you can do that as well. Um, you want to also take the end, now remember this was the end that was in your thumb and see how much it's grown because as you're pulling, it does grow. Um, so you wanna make a knot in the other end as well. Just kind of hide it. You can loop it through any one of your loops that you find here. Um, so you're gonna pull what's left and pull it through um, and make another loop and just make a knot. So you have a knot on that end. And you can cut off any remaining that's left, but always remember if you want um, to tie this together, say you do want to, um, you know, make it as a bracelet, just keep some loose ends enough to tie it if you'd like. And you can always hide and tuck, like Stacy said, forgiving crafts, <laughs> any loose ends you can hide and tuck um, in to um, other loops that, that you have there. And Stacy, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna mention, we have about two minutes left. Okay. So whenever you get a chance, you can hand it off to me, but you certainly could kind of finish up with um, if you had any kind of extra things you wanted to tell us. Um, yeah, let me throw in. So as you can see here on this, I made tassels. Um, so really quick, you can take, if you want to add tassels to the end of your project, um, cut about, say, like four inches. And what you're gonna do, I'm, I know I'm showing this to you fast, but you can actually um, Google this as well and look it up. So you're, uh, look it up online. You're gonna just make a loop, take two ends together and wherever the end of your project is, find a loop and pull that through. And then just take those two ends and pull it through the loop. So you have a nice little, tassel hanging down and you can strategically place them wherever you'd like. 
so that they hang nicely from the bottom or the ends um, of your project. Um, is there anything I'm leaving out? Let me see, I think. Um, so, you know, just remember again, this is the technique and you can go back and watch it over and over. Um, th this is a very personal thing that you can make. It's so fun to go to the store and just peruse down the aisles and pick the yarn and the texture, like feel them. You know, th this one's very hard. You know, if you want it around your neck, you might want a softer one. <laughs> so it's so fun to, um, really to be able to do that. So once you master the technique, I hope that you find this as mesmerizing and relaxing as I did. And so I felt so empowered, like, you know, when, it, when I made this and I finished it and my granddaughter was so happy, I was like, I really did this. <laughs> Yay. I was so proud of myself. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this technique. And um, I hope that you uh, master it as well and make a beautiful scarf. Uh, for yourself as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stacey. Thank you so much, Sunny, for being here and for sharing, um, both of you for sharing such important information about our topic today um, and this wonderful craft. It's so cool. I love this. going to make a it little looks great. It. It's so neat, so easy. We did it in a short amount of time and you can watch the video over and over yeah. and over again. So thank you, Stacey, <laughs> and thank you, Sunny, for being here. Thanks to our wonderful knitters who joined us today. Uh, and uh, of course, um, just like you might continue learning about knitting, like Stacey was just saying, uh, we hope that you will continue learning about this topic of, 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 of homelessness. Um, it is not a one and one, uh, one and done conversation. This warrants uh, ongoing conversation. And so, towards that end, we will end up sending you our post event email, which will have our video of this event in it, as well as our infographic. Um, it will also have another survey for you, um, a survey for you to fill out uh, just about the event and what you thought of it. But we're going to have a survey that we're going to put on right now for you, a little poll that if you can just uh, answer those questions, we'll, uh, we would greatly appreciate it. Tyler is going to help us with that. Um, but we encourage you to share our infographic and our video with others to help um, help them educate themselves about this topic as well. Uh, and additionally, we ask that you um, commit to one weekly act to raise awareness about the uh, the issue of the unhoused or to help a homeless person that may um, that maybe you can help them out in some way. So, uh, you know, we were talking about, you know, maybe, uh, you know, sure, it's about giving money, but sometimes it's not about giving money. Sometimes it's about food. Sometimes it's not about food. Sometimes it's just about like treating them like humans and having that eye contact like Sunny was talking about and, um, you know, and helping them out when they need it, like Stacy was talking about as well. So um, get informed. Coming to this event is a fantastic way to do that. But additionally, you know, research your local political candidates. Where do they stand on the issue of um, of homelessness, funding for homeless services, affordable housing, housing, things like that? Um, and just realize that you can make an impact in somebody's life by volunteering at a, a, a shelter or a homeless center as well. Um, but sure, be sure to make uh, make a phone call first and find out if your help is particularly um, needed in a in a given place. You don't want to just show up and say, I'm here to help, and they don't know what to do with you, right? So call up and try to arrange to be helpful. Um, and then also what you can do right now is take that poll. Um, we hope you'll um, come visit more of our events. We have um, our, uh, our, our, sorry, we have an event coming up on indigenous culture. It's gonna be our craftivism, another craftivism event like this one. And that's gonna be on January 11th uh, from 6.30 to 7.30. Um, we uh, also have lots of additional events. We have an event coming up this Saturday, which is a children's crafting event uh, that we're gonna be celebrating Hanukkah. And we're also going to be talking about um, about we're going to be making a shamash candle uh, as well. Uh, but we have lots of events. We've had we'll have had thirty six events in our fiscal year this year. So please check out our website uh, again if you're watching this on YouTube. And thank you all for staying a little bit later. If you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to um, to um, like our our, our video and uh, subscribe to our channel. Um, and of course, we always, always appreciate a donation that will help keep our events free. So thank you so much for coming. If you have a minute, do complete that poll uh, that's on your screen right now. And thank you so, so, so much for coming. Thank you. Hopefully the poll is there now. Shulamit mentioned that the poll disappeared. Um, so hopefully you can see that poll now. Thank you folks so much. I really appreciate your, your help. Um, I'd like to also add any donations made from now to the end of the year 
will be matched. Excellent. That's true. Up to uh, there's a, a cap on it, four thousand dollars. But by all means, please donate as much as you can to help us get that match. We really appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Sunny, for being here. Thank you, T um, Tyler, for helping us. Thank you, Stacy, for for co-facilitating as well. I love this. Thank group. you. This is such a great technique. Thanks everybody <laughs> for coming. Bye. Bye. Take care, everybody.